Let's have a look at how to read a wiring diagram. We're looking at a 2001 Silverado headlamp circuit. What's nice about this wiring diagram is it's still fairly basic and straightforward, but it does start to integrate some computer controls. So when I'm looking at a wiring diagram, if I'm breaking the wiring diagram down, I usually like to start with my grounds. If I am diagnosing a vehicle and I have the wiring diagram pulled out to diagnose a specific symptom, one of the first things that I always like to check is the fuses. Because the fuses are typically pretty straightforward to access and get to, and there's really no point in tracing powers and grounds all throughout the circuit if you have a bad fuse, because the bad fuse is going to open the circuit to protect the circuit. So we need to figure out why that fuse blew, but that's a video for another day. So while we're looking at this wiring diagram, just a couple of general wiring diagram things that we're going to start with where it says hot at all times hot in run or start what does that mean well hot at all times means that we're going to have system voltage present on that part of the circuit at all times whereas hot in run or start means that when the key is turned forward in the run position or cranking position we will at that point have our system voltage on that circuit next let's take a look okay so you notice that we have a dotted line that goes around this entire component right there that is our underhood junction block that's our fuse block and then and a couple other dotted lines that we have if you notice right here this is the connector so this is connector c1 and this dotted line is showing us that those three wires are together in that connector we have a few different connectors with some of them having wires that are together and some of them being on their own just something to pay attention to it can get confusing when you're under a fuse block or at a module and you've just got wires running everywhere so not always easy to access something else to note in wiring diagrams this s100 s101 those are splices so what does that mean that means that this wire and this wire are connected. So they use a common grounding point. So that is an issue where you have multiple symptoms and you're looking at a wiring diagram. So for example, our left fog light and our left daytime running light doesn't work. Well, what do they have in common? It looks like they have different fuses. However, they have the same ground. So in that particular scenario, I would be chasing the ground first before potentially looking at two separate issues within a circuit. So from there, we do have a couple of other, like there's our headlight switch. We have a fog light switch. Those are identified pretty nicely for us. Now, a wiring diagram won't tell you where those are at, but at least they tell you what they are. We have our body control module. Do note, that is not the entire body control module. Those are only the circuits and the wires within the body control module or from the body control module that pertain to our circuit that we're taking a look at. So let's start tracing some of these powers and grounds. I'm gonna use blue for the ground. Grounds are typically black, but blue just makes it a little bit easier to see on the wiring diagram. So from our fog lamp, we have ground, and this is nice. It tells us where that's located on the left radiator support. We also have a ground at the left rear of the engine, and that ground is for our headlamp relay. Anytime you're looking at a relay, note, this is a coil inside the relay. So we need to have power at one side and ground at the other side of that. So if you're ever confused as to, okay, where do I have power? Where do I have ground? Any type of component needs to be activated. So this left headlamp high beam, for example, we need to have ground on one side of it and we need to have power on the other side of it. And where that can become a little bit important is if you have something that is controlled by the computer and you can't necessarily tell which wire is what because wiring diagrams won't tell you what's supposed to be where. So the best thing to do is practice and work through diagrams and you'll get more familiar with them. Now here's my last ground down here, splice pack at the left side of the dash. Okay, next let's start checking for powers. So let's trace through our fuses. So through this fuse here, 
we've got power that runs down to our headlamp switch. With that switch activated, power would run through the switch and then back up over here. You have to be careful when you're chasing your powers in your ground. Something that I've seen people make the mistakes on is they might have a power on one side of a switch and a ground on the other. Well, what would happen if you had ground and power and then you flip that switch? You'd get a short circuit and everything would melt. Well, actually, realistically, you'd blow the fuse, assuming that you have a fuse somewhere on the circuit. So switches will be either ground and ground on each side or power and power. You can't have a power going to a ground. Let's see. Okay, so in this pin E1, we have another orange wire. And that comes down and that runs all the way over to our headlamp dimmer switch. Following back through from our headlamp switch here, we had power that ran up to, it looks like E8 in connector C1. There are two wires that go to pin E8. And that other wire comes down here and goes to our body control module. Okay, so that power goes up to our relay. So now we know that our headlamp switch controls a relay, which then runs hot at all time. We would have power that runs into our relay. And then through here, there is a splice. There is two separate fuses. One for our right side high beam and low beam, and one for our left side high beam and low beam. So in pin C2, we have two wires. Pin B1, we have two wires. We should have power that runs to each of our headlamps. Now on the other side of the headlamps should be ground. And that runs into a junction block. And that ground should run back through here to our dimmer switch. That would run to the computer to indicate to the BCM that our high beams are on. That way the BCM can turn that little light on on the dash that says high beams on. And then that also runs to our headlamp dimmer switch. Okay, cool. What else have we got? Well, looks like over here we have a daytime running light relay. We have a fuse, hot and runner start, so we should have power to that relay. Then remember on the other side of the relay is going to be a ground. And that runs back to the BCM. So the BCM is able to turn your daytime running light relay on or off by controlling the coil inside the relay. That's pretty neat. We have another fuse. We have power that runs into our relay. And then we have power that runs to our left and our right side daytime running lamps. Cool. And then we have one more relay. This is our fog lamp relay. Not every vehicle would have come equipped with the fog lights. If it did though, we'd have power that runs down through here. Power, so this side of the relay right here would be our load side. So you'd typically have pin 30 as your common that always has power to it. And then on the other side here, you would have pin 87. And if it's a five pin relay, 87A. On the control side, you'd have 85 and 86. And that power runs to the fog lamp switch, it has our little indicator on the switch to tell us that, hey, yep, fog lights are on. And on the other side of that indicator, because remember that is a light, that is a load, even though it's a very small, tiny little LED, we're going to have ground, comes back to this junction block and back to this splice pack which then runs over to our dimmer switch. We can't have a power and a ground out of splice, otherwise it would melt the splice. So we have a ground that would indicate to the BCM that our fog lights are on. Okay, cool. So we've taken care of most of this wiring diagram here. We have the fog lamp relay here that we still need to know what it is. And then we have an exterior lamp system park lamp relay. So without looking at that wiring diagram, 
I'm not 100% certain which side is power and which side is ground. So if that's important to us, we would need to go look up this other wiring diagram so that we would be able to figure out our powers and our grounds. What else do we have? We've got a flash to pass wire, and then we also have an ambient light sensor. Now, I don't know exactly on this ambient light sensor which side is going to be power, which side is going to be ground. This little symbol here is for a photodiode. Through your diode, typically, you would have power on one side of it, and then you'd have ground on the other. But you do have to be careful. These schematics aren't always necessarily drawn 100% accurately. But a little hint, this AL, ambient light sensor reference, is typically going to be your ground. And then the signal will be the left up. We need a power, so that signal will be power. Not all signals are power, but typically. And we know that we have our reference that is a ground, so we're pretty good there. Now this FTP, this flash to pass. Well, what are we gonna have there? Are we going to have power or are we gonna have ground? Remember earlier I said on the switch, we can't have power on one side and ground on the other. Well, we got power here and that switch runs back through that wire. So that means that we would have to have power going through this flash to pass. And that would be when, obviously, your high beams are flashed to indicate to somebody that you are going to pass them. So there we go. There we have it. We have figured out what's going on in this wiring diagram. Hope you found this helpful. Please let me know in the comments if there's something else I can do for you.